So I'd like to start off by saying I'm not one of those people who will hate a game because the story sucks. Gameplay is what matters most to me. If Sonic 06 had been a great game, the story would just be good for a laugh and be totally irrelevant to the actual content in the game. I've never held the Sonic franchise to be high art in storytelling. As much as I like this series, I could name a thousand plot holes from the other games alone. I still call bullshit on the fact that Gun arrested Sonic for destroying Prison Island. I'm not a deserter from any military facility. You're awful quiet. So what? Well, from what I heard, you caused quite a ruckus over at Prison Island the other night. Now we can't get two words out of you. Guess I'm not feeling too chatty. Bullshit! I could ignore plot holes, however, if it entertains me enough. Bad plot or not, I just want something memorable that I can quote forever. Something that's worth talking about, that puts a smile to my face. I liked Sonic Adventure 2's story. I liked Sonic Rider's story. Yes, the racing game. But anywho, Sonic 06 does have a lackluster story. It had good ideas and promising characters to be sure, but it doesn't tell the story well at all, and the characters all come off like idiots making really terrible decisions. Not to mention all the plot holes which make the story make no sense. We got a lot of ground to cover, so I'll try and be as quick as I can. Oh, and apparently the total length of all the cutscenes combined goes over an hour and a half. If you're gonna make so many scenes that it can make its own movie, then yes, I am allowed to critique them. Just saying. Firstly, while the game did have that fancy opening cinematic where my friends mistook it for Final Fantasy XII, the actual in-game cinematics are really bad. Like Sonic Adventure 2, the lip-syncing is not accustomed to the English voice acting, but rather the Japanese voice acting. It's really glaring when characters talk and nothing comes out. Okay, you be careful, Tails! Or if they're talking, but their mouths aren't even moving. I don't know what Eggman's up to, but it can't be a good thing! The character models are so dead. They don't have a good range of emotions, so Sonic and friends look like basketball mascots or mannequins or something. No, seriously, this is a big deal. Why is it the spin-off game that focuses on airboard racing can have really fun cutscenes, but the 15th anniversary game that prides itself on the ultra-realism they gave to Dr. Eggman has no good animation at all? Seriously, when you watch the scenes, the characters are so blank. Sonic just stares ahead, never changing his facial structure. Hey Sonic, if you had to give yourself one piece of advice, what would it be? Just smile. Exactly! He never smiles! You barely see his mouth sometimes! All of the previous games were far better at showing what a character was supposed to be feeling. I could tell when Shadow was sad. I could tell when Rouge was starting to grow a crush on Knuckles. I could tell when Storm the Albatross was struggling to think of something. I could tell when Sonic was super pissed off. These games remembered that I was watching a cartoon. Animate them! Make them memorable! Not these stiff, boring models which just stand around in every scene. Almost always in the middle of the street in Soliana as well. They're quite noisy. What commotion? There's no people in the scene! It's a ghost town! The cutscenes are boring to watch. There's no pacing at all. In previous games, a cutscene never dragged out for 10 minutes because of awkward pauses where no one talks for a good 5 to 10 seconds. Just get it over with! Presentation-wise, it's got problems. Now for the actual content. You know, for a game called Sonic the Hedgehog, it really has no idea how the character is supposed to be. Sonic is a young, extremely cocky, and super fast hedgehog with attitude. He likes to crack some jokey one-liners every now and then, make fun of the bad guy, and he's really impatient. He doesn't like waiting around. He'd rather be moving and having an adventure. To the game's credit, they nailed exactly one cutscene where Sonic acted like Sonic. Wow, that's a pretty snazzy performance there. Sonic! Sonic the Hedgehog! He's joking around, kicks over a robot with his tippy toes. He's Sonic the Hedgehog, baby! From that point onwards, he transforms completely into a boring, ineffective hero whose dialogue is incredibly bland and forgettable. Oh good, he saved the princess! Oh wait, Eggman grabbed her while he was too busy fighting robots. And don't worry, I'll rescue you! So go do it! What the hell are you doing? Go after him! 
fuck? He waited until daytime to start looking for the egg carrier? Why? Well, good news, he found it, so it's time to speed up! Okay, so he still lost it. I went through Wave Ocean for no reason. The egg carrier got away. It looks like the princess was moved to another location. No. And yeah, remind us again of the plot line you're ripping off. No, really. Remind the audience how shameful it is that Sonic's storyline is all about rescuing Soliana's Princess Elise from the clutches of Dr. Eggman. That storyline that was in, oh, I don't know, every Super Mario game ever made? The princess sure was moved to another location, probably another one of Bowser's castles. Do I need to remind people that Sonic is the anti-Mario? Sega does what Nintendo don't, remember? I thought the whole marketing of Sonic was that he was cooler than Mario. He doesn't save princesses because that's cliche and lame, like that loser Mario. And I'm not calling Mario a loser, Sega was. I like Mario, but I like Sonic more because he was Sonic, not a Mario clone. All the storyline amounts to is, Princess gets captured, Sonic saves her. Oh no, Eggman grabbed her again. Sonic saves her again. Oh no, Eggman grabbed her again. Now, Princess Elise walks out the door? No, really, she just fucking leaves. No opposition, nothing. She and Amy end up strolling through Soliana like it ain't no thing. What, Dr. Eggman didn't bother to lock the door on her jail cell? Well, whatever, because he captures her again, and this repeats until that super final time Sonic saves her for reals. Wow, what a great story. It's such a boring story that it repeats the same set pieces over and over and over again. Not just the princess getting captured, but Sonic takes her to a big open field and cue the CG cutscene. This happens twice. Dr. Eggman literally explains his plan to conquer the world to Elise twice. No, I'm not kidding. He doesn't give her new information. They literally drag out the story by explaining things twice. And with its power, I will be able to control everything and rule the world. I wish to obtain this power and dominate everything in this world. Did they even read the script? Jesus. But I know what you guys want me to talk about. You want me to talk about Princess Elise and her interaction with Sonic. Since it's the big focus of the story, right? Well, to understand Elise, we must first understand her backstory and what her deal is. She is the Princess of Soliana. The King of Soliana, aka the Duke of Soliana, basically lost his wife to some unexplained death, and he wanted to control time in order to save her. Cue the Sun God Solaris. Solaris's base original form is that of a blue flame. The Duke ran secret illegal experiments in an aquatic base underneath the city in the hopes of controlling Solaris. Somehow, he managed to split the creature into two different forms, that of a fire elemental named Iblis, and that of the Devil. We'll call him Mephilus. No, I don't know why Solaris starts off as a flame, then becomes the Legend of Zelda shield design, and can be split into a fire elemental and the Devil. It seems like weird anatomy for a god to have, but whatever. Where did he find Solaris? How did he know he could use it to control time? The game never explains any of this, and the citizens have no reason to know either. Anywho, shit goes wrong, and the experiment backfires, exploding on the Duke's face and leaving him near death. Princess Elise was in the laboratory at the time, which is also complete bullshit. She's clearly in her pajamas. What, she went downstairs for a glass of milk in the secret underwater lab with the metallic silver ball puzzle? Why was she even there? Anywho, Solian and Royalty apparently have the blood to absorb Iblis, aka the Flames of Disaster. And they also know they can seal Mephilus in some kind of scepter they created called the Scepter of Darkness. How do they know they can do these things with the two halves of Solaris? I don't know. It makes no sense. This game comes off like bad fan fiction. Anywho, the Duke decides in his dying breath to use his daughter Elise as a vessel to contain Iblis. And he warns her that if she cries, Iblis will get out and the world will be destroyed. Oh, that's fucking brilliant. Father of the year, ladies and gentlemen. First off, I think it's pretty amazing they knew all of this. Has someone absorbed Iblis before and cried? Is that how they know? How do you know Iblis can only get out by tears? What if you die? I mean, if Elise dies in a fiery explosion, does Iblis get released? Elise! Guess so, because Silver's future is fucked if she dies that way. Oh, and I'll mention a plot hole later, but yeah. This is Elise's character. She's the last of her family, and she contains the flames of disaster inside of her. 
If she cries, we all die. And again, really? I'm sorry, but I gotta call bullshit once again. She would have cried before this game took place, expecting me to believe that an eight-year-old girl wouldn't cry over the death of her father, over being an orphan, over being sheltered your whole life and not experiencing what the world has to offer? She would have cried! I cried at eight years old when I tripped over a fucking rock! Shadow cried in Sonic Adventure 2! Amy cries in this game! But I digress. Then Dr. Eggman learns of Iblis and decides to capture Elise and try and use her... somehow. It's never explained what he's going to do to her. So she meets Sonic. Oh yeah, that. She thinks Sonic is Silver because we later discover Silver goes back in time to the exact time and place where Duke puts Iblis inside of her. But when she meets Silver again with Sonic, she never even asks about him. Never brings him up to Sonic, and Sonic never asks who he is either. Even though the dude tries to kill him twice. Hey, you remember in Sonic Adventure 2 when Sonic met Shadow and he was all obsessed with him? The reason I'm in here is because of that fake hedgehog. That black hedgehog? Did you see it? Where is it now? I found you, faker. So why does Sonic not give a shit about Silver here? He never even mentions him. Even when he stumbles onto him in the future, he immediately drops the subject to go, Whatever, check the computer! Uh, hello? The psychic guy? The black hedgehog who looks exactly like Shadow? Why in the following scene isn't he all, Hey Shadow, I just saw you a few minutes ago. Who's Silver, and why did you send him to kill me? It's almost like Sonic doesn't care about anything that's going on. Okay, I digressed way too much. Back to Elise and Sonic. So you know... I don't hate this. Sonic is Sonic, the smooth-talking, fast-running hero, and he's opening Elise's eyes to thrills and adventure. He's showing her the value of life and how great friendship is. It's not a real manly storyline. I think most kids would probably roll their eyes at a storyline like this, but you know what? I can appreciate them going with a new direction here. That's all it is, is Sonic showing Elise how to have fun. Yep, just a good story about friendship. Sonic Team wouldn't possibly go in a weird direction that doesn't make sense. So, what does this guy look like? Have you already been on a date with him? Well, no, I, I really haven't. A date? Who does Elise have a crush on? I owe you a lot, Sonic. Uh... <laughs> what the... No! I mustn't cry. I can't. What the hell are you doing? Stop! Don't do this! Sonic and Elise are love interests? Ugh. Ugh. Well, where do I begin? Let me first explain why I like Amy Rose. Amy Rose is very different from your typical main character love interest. She's the one obsessing over the guy. Usually in movies and cartoons and superhero stuff especially, it's always the dorky, wimpy guy who is pining for a date with the super sexy, attractive girl. In this scenario, Amy wants Sonic. Bad. If I tell ya, will you marry me? No way! I thought I had you this time! And besides, this way, I'll be able to keep my eyes on you. Ugh. Like, I'm gonna stalk him and convince him to marry me bad. <laughs> Sonic, however, is the anti-Mario. He doesn't rescue princesses, and he's so cool that he's not into that whole settling down with a woman thing. He could care less that Amy wants to marry him. He wants no part of that. That was the cool dynamic of this relationship. In Mario, Mario loves Princess Peach. He's nice and jolly, and he'll save her till the end of time. Woohoo! Sonic avoids Amy at all costs and isn't afraid to put her in harm's way. How could you dive into Eggman knowing I was there? It's fun! The theme of Sonic is not about falling in love. This isn't a romance story, Sonic is just too cool for that. So for him to have a sudden and random attraction for A, a human princess, and B, someone really sheltered and tame who doesn't go on adventures, and who the hell knows if she even likes to eat chili dogs, why the fuck would he be into her? Now in the trial of love before Kingdom Valley, you're actually given a choice. Sonic has to pick either Amy or Elise to be his one true love. And it doesn't matter who you pick, because there is no Ron choice, and either way, you get an easy S rank. 
The story doesn't even change depending on who you pick. Though if you pick Amy, the ending is really fucking awkward, let me tell you, but I won't spoil it yet. So you can argue that Sonic doesn't love Elise, but honestly, the googly-eyed swooning he does when she compliments him, this entire scenario, the fact that it's a possibility is just Ron all by itself. Let me tell you about a pretty decent Sonic X episode. The episode, Chase After the Hero, Sonic! In this episode, Sonic meets a girl one day while running around, who is bound to a wheelchair and feels neglected by her parents. They won't take her to a special place she wants to go to, and Sonic, being the upstanding awesome guy he is, decides to take her. Meanwhile, the subplot of this episode is that the president's aide wants Sonic to attend a party at the White House. At any means necessary! So he sends troops after Sonic. This results in a chase and a series of action pieces where the girl gets the thrills of her life. We almost made it. <laughs> Sorry, it's just that, well, I feel so alive. It's so beautiful. I've never seen so many flowers before. <gasps> They're the prettiest flowers anywhere. See? This doesn't need to be a romance. It would have stood alone as a fine plot if the writing was better and they didn't introduce that weird fucking element. And goddamn is Sonic so much better in this one episode than he is in the entirety of Sonic 06. But Sonic, aren't you supposed to go see the president? That guy can wait. He has attitude. He doesn't come off like a boring robot like he does in 06. He doesn't have any snappy one-liners in this game past the opening cutscene. He doesn't taunt Eggman or make fun of Shadow's serious side. He's too busy being a boring protagonist. Where's the fun? Snappy one-liners have been a staple of his character. I know some people find it cheesy, but welcome to Sonic. He's always been this way. Oh yeah! This is happening. Look, it's a giant poppy egg. Talk about low budget flights. No food or movies. I'm out of here. I like running better. I thought that capsule you were in exploded in space. You know, space. what can I say? I die hard. Ha! Think I'd miss this? Time to crack that Eggman wide open! Yeah, let's party! Woohoo! Now we're talking! Bring it on! Let's see one of his lines in 06. Don't be late. Don't be late? Really, Sonic? I think you'd be more inclined to go, Last one to the Emerald's a rotten Eggman! Or something like that. I'm sorry, but this isn't a Sonic I want to follow. If he was as boring in future games as he was in this one, I'd never want to see him again. But again, he's boring, and this romance thing is just stupid and doesn't belong. And yes, I do object to the fact that she's human. Sonic's head is bigger than her body. It's so fucking awkward. It's the worst thing. But I'm done with this. For now. Shadow the Hedgehog's story is the most interesting storyline in the game. That doesn't make it great, mind you, but at least we are actually learning what's going on and Shadow seems confident at what he does. Seriously, this guy's been upstaging Sonic in every game they've been in. It's a wonder Sonic Team didn't start changing the titles to Shadow 06 or Shadow and the Secret Rings. Remember that Don't Be Late line? Well, let's see Shadow's response to that. Don't be late. Same to you. Oh, snap! Shadow had the better line. Hey look, it's Iblis Phase 2! Shadow's leading the pack, being the leader. Sonic's hanging in the back. The back! Shadow has to save Sonic from Silver. And then he roundhouse kicks Silver in the head! Like a boss! Seriously, I'm not even a big Shadow fan, but he's the main character of this game. Not Sonic. Shadow's main enemy is the devil! I mean, Mephilus. And honestly, I can see why people like Mephilus. He manipulates people into killing innocent people, and he tries to convince Shadow to join the dark side. He can take a shitload of gunfire and laugh it off. <laughs> he can literally travel to any point in time that he wants. Seriously, the only thing that can stop this guy is a scepter. 
And even then, he busts out of it the second time he's thrown into it. In some cutscenes, he's actually intimidating as he walks like a creepy zombie. But here's the problem. Because of the plot holes, even a great character like Mephiles can come off like an idiot. If he can travel whenever he wants through time, why doesn't he merge with Iblis when he gets out of Elise? Seriously. No one in the game clarifies whether Mephiles needs Elise to cry, but even then, it wouldn't be hard. Just fucking torture her! Push her down a flight of stairs! You don't need to make this complicated thing where you manipulate a psychic hedgehog to kill him. Silver doesn't even end up killing Sonic, so it was a big waste of time. So why can't Mephiles merge with Iblis now? Why does he wait till later? And no, fanboys of this crappy game, you need to post physical proof where they say he can't merge with Iblis in the future. The game never explains the nature of how Mephiles needs to merge with Iblis to become Solaris. It's a giant plot hole. Why didn't he merge with him already? What, is Mephiles an idiot? Shut up! Shadow's powers keep growing. They give him the ability to turn into a fireball if he takes off his bracelets. Something that was never hinted at in the previous games at all. Why didn't he do that during the Bio-Lizard fight? Or with Sonic? Or Black Doom? But the dumbest one of all is that he can use Chaos Control to travel through time. Bullshit! How long could he do that? You'd think if he had the power to travel through time, he would have saved Maria from the gun soldiers! Don't give me that time paradox shit! It's fiction! Marty McFly didn't erase the universe when he turned his dad from a wimp to a confident badass. Better yet, Sonic didn't eradicate the universe when he saved Elise from dying in a fiery explosion. Sonic changed history. We're still here. If Shadow could have saved Maria, he would have done it. I don't care if he let go of his past. You can say you're over a girl, but that doesn't make it true. If he knew he could get out of there and have her living in an old age home so he could play bingo with her in present day, he would. It's been the entire motivation of his anger and his pathos. Bah! Why does Omega lock up Shadow? In a cutscene near the end, he explains that humanity did indeed turn on him in the future, and he was the one who locked him up. But that wasn't his command. Rouge said clearly, Take this and deliver it to Shadow. New mission, Shadow support. External access no longer permitted. So Omega knew he had to support Shadow, but then he fucking locked him in a cage, went dead for a few hundred years, then came back to save him from Mephiles? That's stupid and doesn't make sense. Why doesn't Shadow arrest Dr. Eggman? He's a terrorist who just bombed Soliana and kidnapped the princess. If you work for Gun now, arrest the motherfucker! You can interrogate him and force him to tell you about Solaris. And why did you interfere with the past at all? Back to the Time Paradox statement, well Shadow totally locks up Mephiles in the Scepter even though he should be smart to know that he'll get sealed in the Scepter without him. Why did he interfere and take charge and change history himself? Why is Rouge a skanky whore? Silver storyline. Again, I'd want to stress I don't hate Silver. He's meant to be the cool new character who sells copies of the games. His personality isn't really that annoying, but his voice kind of is. No way! No way! It's no use! It's no use! I do question how dumb he has to be to totally kill Sonic because a time-traveling hedgehog with no mouth told him to do it. I'd be a little alerted to the fact that I'm helping the devil. He's so clearly fucking evil. Wait, how did he put Sonic in that Chaos Emerald? No, really, how did he do that? Why is Blaze the cat here? She is a princess from an alternate dimension. She collects opposite Chaos Emeralds, known as Soul Emeralds. She is opposite Sonic. She fights an opposite Dr. Eggman named Eggman Nega, a literal recolor of Dr. Eggman. So why did Sonic 06 change her whole fucking backstory? I'm sorry, but that really does irk me. You know, I don't really mind the plot holes that much. It's one thing to make everyone out of character for one game, but when you totally disregard the previous games and act like their plot never happened, and you confuse the audience into wondering what the hell Blaze is supposed to be, I find that really annoying and shameful. If you ever needed a sign that the writers didn't give a shit anymore, and they were just throwing in whatever to make kids buy the game, that screams laziness, and it's basically a big middle finger to the audience. This isn't a fucking reboot. You've totally changed Blaze's backstory when it was just established last year in Sonic Rush! 
Takashi Izuka actually had to retcon this game out of existence and tell the fans, No, Blaze is from the Soul Dimension. Ignore that Sonic 06 bullshit. <laughs> he didn't say it exactly like that, but god damn it, what a disgrace. Fans are already confused enough. Some people still believe Gerald Robotnik is the quote, original Robotnik. That would make Sonic over 50 years old. Bah. Amy mistakes Silver for Sonic? Really? First Elise did that, and now Amy does too? And holy sexual harassment, stop grabbing Silver there! Bad touch! Bad touch! If I had to choose between the world and Sonic, I would choose Sonic! Oh, I love that line of dialogue. After Amy saves Sonic, our incompetent hero, and helps him escape from Silver, she says this little nugget. Even if Sonic turned evil, and totally became a supervillain who destroys the world, she'd still choose to be with Sonic. What in the fuck?! I don't care what happens to the world! Wait, Elise says that too?! What the hell is this game teaching people?! If you really love someone, put up with all of the evil things they do, because true love is eternal, baby! Doesn't matter if Sonic abuses you, cheats on you, insults your friends, and acts like a dick, stick with him, because true love. God, what a terrible message. Amy Rose loves Sonic because he's a hero. She would not like him anymore if he stopped being Sonic-like. The old SA1 Amy would never say this. To kill someone to save the world, is that really the right thing to do? Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. This is a Sonic game! Why are we talking about whether it's right to kill someone? What happened to the levity of the series? Why is this so dark and grim? Where's the fun? I don't mind when Sonic tries to add tension and raise the stakes, but this is just ridiculous! So after Sonic tells Silver he's gonna save Elise and save the future, Silver decides, you know what? I won't join Sonic and make sure he succeeds. I'm gonna go home with Blaze to my timeline. Well, guess what? The second he lands back home, it's still a fire world. Uh, Silver? That means Sonic fucking failed! Elise ended up crying anyway, or dying, or however Iblis got out of her. But no, he figures he'll do exactly what the Duke did and seal Iblis inside him. Great plan! Since Silver isn't Soleon and royalty, only Blaze can absorb Iblis because she has a soul that's lit with flames. Somehow. And then she's destroyed and eradicated to never be seen again. And no, people, this isn't a prequel to Sonic Rush. She never makes any mention of Sonic or Iblis or Silver in Sonic Rush, so how in the fuck would that make sense? Azuka did indeed straight up say, she's from the Soul Dimension, Sonic 06 isn't Blaze's backstory. So this isn't a prequel. The writing is so damn incompetent, ugh. What needs to be said? The plot isn't very exciting, it has plot holes up the ass, none of it ever, ever makes you smile at all. It's just a bad plot. Now honestly, there are other issues with the story I could bring up, but they're really minor and I'd be nitpicking at this point. I didn't want to bring the story into part 7, I just wanted to end it now. Because I talked about all the gameplay, I cleared all the levels, I cleared all the storylines, I, I talked about the plot, I said I liked the music, I'm done, Sonic 06! I'm done! I must be done! <laughs> oh, you're not done yet, Great Clement! You have one last episode! One last level, one last boss fight! All you have to do is beat that, and the game's over! One more level, huh? Fine. I'll do it. It can't be that bad. It just can't. Oh yeah! It's gonna be quick and painless.